What's going on DMG clan? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play DS on your Asus Rogue Ally Z1 Extreme using the DNA Duo and Malin DS. So what a time it is to be alive with DS emulation on our Z1E in 2025. So that is right, mobile gamers. Today we are going to set up Melon DS for our Asus Rogue Ally Z1 Extreme. This guide is going to show you everything you need to know to use the DNA Duo with your Asus Rogue Ally so that you can play DS emulation with two screens the way that it's meant to be. So hit that subscribe button, go buy yourself a DNA Duo today, and also hit that like button or dislike button if you don't like me because there seems to be a lot of those out there and follow this video if you got a dna duo and you have a asus rogue ally z1e so the first thing we're going to do here guys is we're going to type in our search bar of our favorite web browser of choice melon ds and then we're going to navigate to the web browser right here and you should see this web browser open up which is melon ds.karibo64.net all links are in the description below if you need to get there faster now scroll in until you see downloads and click on downloads now as of today the latest release is from july 8th 2025 and that is the day of me filming this video so whatever day this is this is where you're going to get the latest release. Now scroll down until you go to Windows X64 and click on download. Now click on that file folder, which is a zip file and check box the Melon DS and extract it somewhere where you know where it's going to be. I'm going to go into my documents folder and that's where I'm going to paste it. Select this folder and click select and extract. And now, as you can see, I have a folder in there called emulation as well. And that's because I have all of my games and my saves and my updates and all that kind of stuff in there. But this isn't a video about that. This is a video on how to set up Melon DS. Now I'm gonna close down everything else I don't need open and I'm going to click on Melon DS. Now Melon DS is gonna open in the background here as you can see in the top left hand side. So I'm gonna drag this window over onto the middle of my screen and I'm going to close out of my actual browser. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view. Now view is very important for using the DNA Duo because we're going to select on screen sizing and we're going to select a window that we want this to be. But before we do that, we should open up a new window. So click on new window and then the one on the right is going to be our bottom view and the one on the left is going to be our top view. Now, if you've never connected the DNA Duo to your Asus Rogue Ally, I'm going to show you how to set all that up when we do that part as well. So the first thing you're going to do on the right view, which is our second window, is click on view and click on screen sizing and click on bottom only. Only. Now you can double check this just to make sure that it saved that configuration by going back into view or you can go and use your keypad and gamepad mode and desktop mode and use your actual joystick. I sometimes find the touch on the Asus Rogue Ally kind of weird but anyway so bottom only view screen sizing on the left side is going to be top only. Now the next thing I like to take note of is that you can change your actual aspect ratio if you want to. If people like to stretch their games go ahead all the power to you it's up to you. You can change like the screen size and all that kind of stuff as well but we're not going to worry about that because it's not really necessary the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to input and hotkey now this is very important guys you need to open up your armory crate click on gamepad mode and close armory crate and then use your touch screen and then click on your buttons that you want to change so i'm going to change all of these buttons to the corresponding buttons that i want to use now i wish that melon ds gave you the option to use both the joystick oh you can now i guess they uh, updated this so maybe that's what they updated now you can use both the joystick and the d-pad so that you can select between both of the options now for your x y and z that's up to you how you want to do that but that's what i am going to do is just select all the buttons that i know i'm going to be using for my main button now general hotkeys this is a preference thing this is how i like to do it my toggle fast forward i like to toggle fast forward sometimes because i don't like waiting through cutscenes. i use my l2 my full screen toggle which is going to full screen both the screens is my r2 make sure you click ok Otherwise, the configurations won't save. I'm gonna change back over to desktop mode and I'm gonna use my right joystick for my configuration. I'm gonna go all the way down to video settings. Now I'm gonna open up my video settings here and I'm gonna change my 3D render to OpenGL compute shader i'm going to change my resolution scaler to 4x resolution now you can probably get away with like six i think on the ally x or the alex zeo on extreme i mean and vsync is only really used for some games that are very demanding but i really haven't found a need to use it some people say vsync is good for lower end devices e1e is a pretty good damn device press ok 
Now you saved your configurations. Now the next thing I like to do is go to my config file again. I'm gonna go all the way down to path settings and I'm going to select my save file path folder. And this is all up to preference, but I like to do this because I'm going to have all of my saves inside of my saves folder, my NDS folder, and I'm gonna select this folder. I'm going to use my save states in here as well so that I know where all my save states are for my actual games and click okay. Now you'll notice that when we go to file, you can see an option for save states. Now how they use the save states is basically by pressing shift F1, which you can open up your keyboard and do while you're in a game if you want to. Same with loading the state. Uh, it shows you which buttons are what. So F1, I wish they had like a hot key for this, which I have not to this day since I started using Melon DS on my computer found any hot keys or save state. Yeah, I, I don't know why they wouldn't do that, but whatever, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna break my use case scenario of using Melon DS on my Asus Rogue Ally. So now that we're ready to go, let's jump over and attach our DNA Duo to our Asus Rogue Ally. Now that we have everything set up and ready to go, you're going to connect your DNA Duo adapter to your Asus Rogue Ally. Mine is already connected. And then you're going to grab your DNA Duo screen for your Asus Rogue Ally and attach it just like so. Isn't that cool? If you don't want to use it anymore, just take it off and then put it back on. And then take it off again and then put it back on. Yeah, pretty cool option, right? And you have multiple different angles that you can use with the DNA Duo screen. And you can just close it up like that. Or you can set it like this, like this, like this. Because it's got a strong hinge inside of the actual custom design hinge that I have a patent pending for. Now the next thing you're gonna do is grab your USB-C cable that you got with your DNA Duo. It's branded with the DNA brand on it. And you're going to plug it in. And I would not waste any money making these if I didn't plan on releasing the DNA Duo to all of you. There's a lot of people that are very speculative of this community. And yeah, the DNA Duo is coming very, very soon. I know this video is before this releases, but I thought I would share how to do this for anybody that wants to tinker with something else in the meantime. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our window, which is this one right here. Now, what you need to make sure of is that you have set up your display settings and your display settings should be set up so that you have it set up for actually extending the display. So you can see it a little bit better on the actual OLED display. I have it set up for extending the display. And as you can see here, number two is the DNA Duo and number one is the main display. And you're gonna set that up just like so. And then you're going to basically just go into your file, go to open ROM, and then you're going to look for your games. So my games are in my emulation folder, my ROMs folder, NDS folder, and there's a new Super Mario Bros right there. Now change your gamepad back over to gamepad mode. Press your R2 button to maximize both windows. And there you go. It's really not that hard to play on your DNA Duo. Now the next thing I like to do, like I said, is use my save states. I already have some in here. I'm going to go, I think it's shift. Oh no, it's just... F1. No, nope, it's just F1. And now I screwed up my save states because my old save state was actually per game, but whatever, it doesn't matter. We can just exit out of that keyboard and continue playing. Now I'm going to fast forward this so that you can actually see me play it a little bit and have some fun playing some DS emulation on your DNA duo with the actual two screens that the DS, this one right here originally had. But it's even better because you're playing on your favorite handheld that plays DS emulation upscaled. Gives you save states, gives you some cheats, and it looks a lot better. It makes the games actually look good. And if you pre-order the DNA Duo, you'll be getting yourself a stylus pen and some other awesome nifty gadgets that I have put in there for you guys to enjoy. And the stylus pen just connects to the top of your screen if you don't want to use it. So there you go, guys. Have a nice day. Enjoy playing on your DNA Duo in 2025 with Melon DS and your Asus Rogue Ally Z1 Extreme.